Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Welcome to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. I'm Kelly Mesher Collins with the Diocese of Des Moines. On today's show, we're visiting with Craig Vasquez, a husband, father to six kids, member of Holy Trinity Parish in Des Moines, and a member of the Des Moines Police Department. We'll visit with him today about his work, family, and faith. But before we get to today's interview, let's find out what's on the bishop's mind. It'd be fascinating to speak with Officer That's Vasquez, right. but yes. here we are in October already. Right. My goodness, you know, the month of Mary, <laughs> the Respect Correct. Life Month, there's mm-hmm. a lot there. Obviously, the farmers are getting itchy to get in the fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's obviously been a challenging year for parts of the state experiencing mm-hmm. drought. I understand some uh, places soybeans will be the, the primary and maybe the only crop for some of them. So mm-hmm. our prayers are with them as they mm-hmm. continue to do that. But uh, a harvest of many good things that are there, uh, you know, we concluded September with the, the Feast of the Archangels, Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael. And uh, Michael gets a lot of attention. The uh, pilgrims who walked down from Christ the King Parish down mm-hmm. to the Hacienda de San Miguel, the, <laughs> the ranch of St. Michael down near Indianola. Right. So a 16 mile trek. And then I was fortunate to celebrate Mass with them as well. Of course, and as a William Michael, I mean, we have to shine a light on mm-hmm. St. Michael as well. That's right. That was a, a beautiful thing. And then uh, our priests uh, this past week uh, were on uh, their annual workshop. They were fortunately fed by Father Eugene Hensel, a a Benedictine scholar, a scripture scholar, retired emeritus professor at St. Meinrad Abbey, and uh, really talking about the Gospel of St. Matthew. So it gave us a deep in our reservoir from which we can draw then in the upcoming uh, liturgical year devoted to St. Matthew, where the cycle presents us with Matthew's Gospel Mm -hmm. in all its richness. And so uh, we know Father uh, Simeon, or Erasmo Levi Mercacus, has the four-volume uh, commentary on Matthew's Gospel. But uh, I think Father Matthew, Father Eugene, <laughs> Father Matthew, uh, gave us uh, uh, much to chew on. And so I think you know, that'll be something that hopefully enriches and blesses all of our people throughout the diocese in, in a very beautiful way. So uh, lots of things going on. The Feast of St. Francis. Looking forward uh, to the pilgrimage of the Catholic Foundation of Southwest Iowa. Yes. About 35 folks. Folks from the diocese here in the latter part of the month that's coming up in only a few weeks. So, you know, at some point I'll need to get my bag packed, you know, <laughs> to go over. But it's just going to be such a different experience. I mean, thanks to Monsignor Steve Orr, who's really going to be the, the tour group leader, along with the, the, the uh, fellow from the company who's helping and assist us. But just to be present, to go to Assisi, mm-hmm. to drink all that in, the spirit of Assisi, I think it's been... Well, figuratively well, and literally. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, now, yes, of course, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a little <laughs> pasta and a little vino, you know, a della casa right. would be nice. Yeah, what, yeah. what is Italy without yeah, wine? Yeah, Come I mean, on. this is it, you know, so, uh, you know, all things in moderation, but right. uh, that'll That's be correct. beautiful. You know, so uh, yeah, so, be so all trip. all religious experiences will be will yes, truly like religious. A great so, trip. Yeah, mm-hmm. so and there from there to Florence, Rome, uh, Sorrento on the Amalfi Coast, and back to Rome. Wow, neat. And we'll touch base uh, and uh, Pompeii and things like uh, sites like that. So uh, you know, just to experience because you can never exhaust it. You know, it's always kind mm-hmm. of a sensory overload wherever you go on these places. So it's always you know something old, something new. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the spirit is. I think there. I've been to Italy three times, and there, there's, you've just mentioned and several things I've never seen. So yeah, always a beautiful, lot to see. Beautiful. So our, our Holy Father, in his uh, apostolic letter, thinking about the liturgy, he draws from St. Francis. He concludes with the prayer. And in this year where we're really promoting Eucharistic revival as well, I think brings it together in a very uh, graceful way. Uh, let the, everyone be struck with fear. Let the whole world tremble. Let the heavens exult. When Christ, the Son of the living God, is present on the altar in the hands of a priest, O wonderful loftiness and stupendous dignity, O sublime humility, O humble sublimity, the Lord of the universe, God, and the Son of God, so humbles himself that for our salvation he hides himself under an ordinary piece of bread. Brothers, look at the humility of God and pour out your hearts before him. Humble yourselves that you may be exalted by him. Hold back nothing of yourselves for yourselves, and that he who gives himself totally to you may receive you totally." That's a, from a letter of St. Francis of Assisi to his entire order. And so his burning Eucharistic faith, he who was conformed to the cross in his poverty and in his suffering, but enlivening us. And there's just a kind of an exultant uh, joy that comes forward in that. So hopefully we'll taste some of that when we're visiting Assisi. All right. We're going to take a quick break. On our return, we'll visit Craig Vasquez of Holy Trinity Parish and the Des Moines Police Department. Listen to Making Personal with Bishop Johnson. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Knights of Columbus Borman and Pfeiffer Agencies, serving Catholic families in Iowa, offering life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability insurance, and retirement annuities. The Knights of Columbus, the Fraternal Benefit Society, able to provide financial security to members and their families. Learn how Knights of Columbus agent Walker Borman can help at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801 or kofc.org. kofc.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Established in Des Moines in 1924, St. Vincent de Paul assists those living in poverty to become self-sufficient by helping to remove roadblocks on their journey out of poverty. St. Vincent de Paul helps with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner reentry. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul, svdpdsm.org. Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. On today's show, we're visiting with Craig Vasquez, a husband, father to six kids, member of Holy Trinity Parish in Des Moines, and senior police officer with the Des Moines Police Department. Officer Vasquez, thank you for being with us. We've made our acquaintance only in recent weeks here, and here you are on, on Making It Personal. So thank you for the making the time today. That's right, Bishop, and thank you for having me. Yeah, very good. So, uh, you know, we want to talk about your, your your work, your vocation, to give maybe an insider's glimpse of how, as a man of faith, you do this. But uh, you, your vocation is much more broad than that as a husband and father. And so uh, members of Holy Trinity Parish and your wife as well that you met, can you tell how, you know, that vocational path unfolded? Were you high school sweethearts or how did you come to know each other? <laughs> uh, we were not high school sweethearts, Bishop, but... Uh, you know, love happens at IHOP. So, um, to give you the short, so romantic, right? Yeah, right. IHOP. I do love a good pancake. Yeah, a good short stack there. That's how Jason um, seduced you. <laughs> <laughs> Through dessert. Oh, it. Um, it's a great story, really. Um, so I started with where I work, the Des Moines Police Department, in July of 2008. Graduated from the academy in December of 2008. My field training officer. Um, eventually introduced me to her daughter. And so a field training officer is someone who kind of guides you through the preliminary months of, of training on the street. They help you with paperwork and, and um, just all sorts of things related to the job. You respond to calls for service with your field trainer, and she wanted to introduce me to her daughter. Which and is high praise, right? I mean, she thought you I, had the chops, you know, I mean, right? I mean, you, 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 you had potential. Right, I guess, I guess. And um, yeah, it, field training obviously wasn't about that, but she eventually introduced me to my wife, Katie, who would be someone who would become my wife, Katie. And so we met at IHOP uh, several years ago in December of 2008. Marvelous. And that was not in the Des Moines area, was it? Or was it? Uh... Just... Um, yeah, it was in the Des Moines area, Bishop. Okay, yes. all, right. all yes. right. Get those facts straight. So uh, married and uh, now members of Holy Trinity Parish and uh, did wasted no time getting a family started. That's right, Bishop. <laughs> uh, God has blessed us with six children, six of them. Uh, uh, our oldest is a little boy. He's 10. Uh, Rowan is his name. And then we have three girls, Greta, Nora, and Penny. Love it. Love <laughs> it. And then we have two little boys, <laughs> Felix and Simon. <laughs> Felix is two. Simon is a year old. So there's never a dull moment at your household. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> so in marriage preparation, did you ever talk about how many children you were open to? Or, you know, was it, oh, maybe we'll have two, you know, couples will say, oh, maybe we'll have one after a few years, you know? <laughs> we, I think, had the number four kind of set in our minds when we were first married, Bishop. Um, but it's just amazing how God works. Yeah. Creating your own culture of life. As Absolutely. Well, so. Yeah. So affiliated with the Des Moines uh, Police uh, early on, you know, hired, and uh, how, how how does that path? I mean, is it a competitive thing? Do you feel like you're under scrutiny? Uh, was it, were there certain qualities that uh, they felt it was a good fit for you, or and and was there any latitude in terms of your actual assignment early on, or do you just kind of say, "Yes, sir, I know what it is to be under authority." <laughs> <laughs> you hit the nail on the head with that, Bishop. And um, yeah, so I think one of the special qualities that I brought to the Des Moines Police Department was my ability to speak Spanish. And so in my class alone, we had um, we had myself. I speak Spanish. We had a, a fellow that speaks uh, Vietnamese, and then another one that um, is from Bosnia. So um, the city. Uh, 
looks for people, for folks that are bilingual, men and women that are able to speak two, sometimes more than two languages. I think we've hired some people in recent years that speak three, four languages. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Des Moines is a very diverse community, and so in order to better serve the community, they look for people who have that background, have that ability to speak another language. Okay. So I think that was one of my selling points, uh, <laughs> Bishop, when I came to Des Moines. I came from a small police department before Des Moines Cedar Falls, Iowa. I worked for the PD there for just under two years and uh, came down here. Okay. So so you had to maybe encounter you and I students on, on occasion, maybe on the hill once in a while there. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> okay. But we'll leave those stories aside as we focus on your role here. Um, and. You know, the, the ability of the bilingual, as you say, the diversity is only uh, increasing in the Des Moines area. Do you get kind of characterized? Well, if there's a call that involves, you know, members of the Hispanic community, you know, call officer Vasquez or, I mean, is that something where it kind of, uh, you know, it's it's a calling card for you. It's an asset you bring to situations. But then does it kind of, do you get kind of typecast in a way that, you know, more certain situations are going to be more uh, likely you're you're going to be the man on the scene? Uh, Yes, absolutely. Now, thankfully, in recent years, we've also hired um, several more Spanish speakers, so I'm not the only one. Um, But yes, in the early years when I came on with the police department, there were a couple of handfuls, I would say, of officers that speak Spanish, that spoke Spanish at that time. Um, Thankfully, thankfully we have a lot more now. And uh, so, yes, um, all the problems that occur to everybody else, um, missing children, uh, domestic violence, vehicle accidents, theft reports, all the above, yeah. we respond to those types of calls for service for the Spanish-speaking community as well as others. Yeah, the human condition is the human condition. That's right, <laughs> you know, Bishop. Right. You know, and you know, with our seminarians and certainly for clergy, we would certainly support them and encourage them, and maybe even expect them to have Spanish language formation. Uh, I wish myself uh, to have another opportunity to deepen my ability there. But uh, will the would the uh, department pay for people to get those abilities or not? Would they? Uh, so, yes, the department does have a tuition reimbursement program where um, officers can go back to school and return to obtain a degree. Uh, Spanish could certainly be an option, um, as well as criminal justice, um, business management, things okay. like that. So, yeah. And then there are also several uh, training opportunities for officers, um, training for maybe drug recognition, um, traffic enforcement, drug interdiction, so on and so forth. But Spanish, roadside Spanish courses are also available for police oh, officers. Yeah. So that's, yes. It's fascinating to hear about the professional development opportunities. So, yeah. So members of Holy Trinity Parish, Father Mark Neal is obviously very pleased to have your family there at, at Holy Trinity. We love him. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, are there aspects of involvement there at, at Holy Trinity that then, you know, uh, you know your, your man with, probably doesn't sleep very much sometimes, but uh, they carry over <laughs> into the job then too. Are there, are there, you know, your family involved at Holy Trinity and, uh, you know, are you involved in any way that then is kind of a part of your being a, a, a man with a public profile in the community? Yes, ab- absolutely, Bishop. Uh, there's a lot of uh, just great opportunity there um, to help within the church community. Um, so recently, within the last four years or so, my wife and I became involved in Teams of Our Lady through Holy Trinity, and uh, we really learned the importance of conjugal prayer. Um, spousal prayer, prayer with one another. Um, I think it's referenced in Scripture, but also, you know, in the book of Tobit, Tobias and his wife, Sarah, uh, kneel and ask for God's mercy and protection together. They pray. And uh, just to strengthen that marital bond, that covenant relationship with God involved. Um, And so that's one of the biggest things that my wife and I um, really participate in and enjoy, the teams of Our Lady folks. Um, Yeah, it's really enriched our marriage. Um, we weren't struggling before. It's not for couples that struggle necessarily, although those can be brought to the table. Uh, we do break bread with one another and monthly, and we engage in, in conversation and discuss highs and lows for the month. But uh, it's really just a great group of people, a very special group. Um, in addition to that, at Holy Trinity, we um, or I have recently started um, with a men's group um, in Exodus 90, oh. which is a great <laughs> Catholic male spirituality exercise. Um, not, not, sure. not for the faint of heart. I mean, you, you have to be all in with that, right? And Absolutely. So discipline, but uh, um, I suspect that's not something you're starting from scratch then with that. So. No, I, I did it for the second time this past year with a group of, we had 10 men that did it. Uh, three Protestants, in fact, uh, one of which was a co-worker uh, down at the Des Moines Police Department. Uh, but we all lifted each other up as Christian men, you know, like Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. 
And um, uh, it was just a wonderful experience um, for a man to deny himself and get into the ascetic practices that I believe were even practiced by church fathers, by the early church. Um, you know, Luke chapter 9, Jesus talks about, let any man that wants to follow me first deny himself and then pick up his cross daily and follow me. And um, boy, oh boy, that rings in my ear every day. Yeah. Was the faith always something in you, in your soul, or is that faith, uh, has there been a period, you know, many people, you know, kind of go dormant for a while and come back? Is that part of your journey? Uh, it certainly is, Bishop. <laughs> um, truth be told, when my wife and I were first married, we were uh, what you would call probably cafeteria Catholics, um, to coin the phrase. Uh, lukewarm in our faith. Um, we had a pretty liberal worldview, and um, that's kind of how we practiced our faith, but a lot of things occurred in those early years of marriage. We began having children, and we, in our lukewarmness, started asking the questions, what are we here to do? Um, what brought me into the back to the church, I left for a while when I was uh, in college, was seeing death and dying as a police officer in Cedar Falls. I started going to Mass because I started to contemplate my own mortality. And my wife and I, as we were married in the early years, began to have these talks of what ought we do with this. If we say we're Catholic and go to Mass on Sunday, is it just a check-the-box thing? Or do we carry it with us everywhere we go? And you know the answer to that. And so it was this, uh, several years where we were kind of coming out of our, our lukewarmness. And thanks be to God. And um, teams of Our Lady and meeting people that have impacted us in the parish. Um, priests, which is Father Michael Amadeo who married us. <laughs> uh, Father Mark Neal. Um, but other priests... Um, Father Pichute comes to mind. Um, we've just been kind of on a journey, uh, constant conversion. Uh, I think one of the gentlemen that spoke, Keith Nestor, about this last weekend. At the Christ uh, Our Life conference. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and uh, things like that. It's all part of the spiritual combat. It's very important for us to acknowledge it exists in this world today. Um, the Eucharistic procession, um, praying for people um, with them. I mean, it's all... Things that we've been impacted, we've seen other people doing this for us, and it's kind of our way of carrying it on. Amen. Amen. Compelling. Uh, so as it c- carries over from who you are as a family, your domestic church, your household, and then, you know, uh, showing up for at the force, you know, for work. I mean, this isn't Blue Bloods, you know, the, the kind of <laughs> fictional <laughs> the fantasy land that TV portrays in some ways. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you get up, you know, your uniform, your badge, the emblems of the, of the force, uh, protective vest that you wear, and obviously carrying lethal force, that uh, awesome and, and humbling responsibility. But how does the faith carry over then? And how, you know... You can't be evangelizing folks, you know, within your own ranks, but but how people probably come to know you're a man, that this is a, a defining feature of who you are. Yes, absolutely, um, Bishop. So as a police officer, we engage with people every single day. Um, we, we meet with victims of assaults, uh, the broken families, missing children, um, the homeless, people who struggle with addictions, um, addictions to alcohol, drugs. Um, but sometimes it's other addictions that get in the way and they break up the family. Um, we see this quite often. People who are experiencing mental health crisis, uh, folks that are suicidal. And so it's an opportunity for me to minister to people, to be the light of Christ for others. Um, I take this very seriously um, now more than ever. And so We meet people on their hardest days, sometimes their worst days, when they're maybe at the bottom of the barrel. And when we have the chance to reach out, to look them in the eyes and say, I care about you, to show them that they're loved, because some of these people have never heard that. Some of them have really little experience with these things, with these words, with these emotions. When you extend a hand out to a person who is suicidal, you can change their trajectory in life. We can really show them that they are loved. As we're all children, we're all sons and daughters of Christ. And to say, I care about you, and other people do as well, let's get up, let's get you some help to wow. get people back on their feet. Um, wow. It's what we do. Yeah, your self understanding. I mean, the drama of the Paschal Mystery, really, life and death in the balance yep. and, and freedom. I mean, I wouldn't think, you know, when Pope Benedict the, the 16th speaks about, you know, Deus Caritas Est, God is love that this is the one thing we can bring to others is that look of love, 
that they have a claim to. You know, most people maybe aren't thinking, well, the police officer is going to be the person who brings that. But you, you know, to be an ambassador of this this unconditional love that people have, no matter their low point. You know, is this something you know, you talk about with your colleagues at all, or you know, is this something that figures into the culture at all, or is this more your own self understanding that you do this? Absolutely, Bishop. Yes. Um, it's not just for the people we serve, it's for everybody. Um, being a man of the cross is something I encourage others to be. I learned this through Exodus in the recent years. And I, I again, I take our, my faith very seriously, and I'd like other men to as well. Um, we spend our lives in diversions, being distracted by things, and seeking lowercase gods. And so helping other men around me, my coworkers sometimes, or maybe people on the street to see that we shouldn't be mastered by anything but God himself. It really is just, it's what we're here to do. Um, Ephesians, I think, 429 talks about never let evil talk past your lips, say only the good things men need to hear, things that will really help them. And I've been that man who needed to hear things, to hear the truth of Christ. And that's what we need to do for others. Be a gift to others and, and try to spread the word. Oh, amen. Amen. Well, you know, we're coming up on a break very shortly here, but, uh, you know, you're posted on the on the east side of Des Moines, and that's where your normal patrol routes are, I understand, and, and things. So uh, in serving that, you have a partner. Has your partner been with you for a long time, or is that rotated pretty uh, periodically? I have had one on and off through the years. Um, one of my more recent uh, partners actually um, resigned within the last year. Uh, Zach's his name, but he's still a great friend, and we keep in contact. Tremendous. Well, well, if you're willing to remain with us, we'll take a little break. Yes, we're going to all right. We're going to take a quick break and return. We'll visit with Craig Vasquez of the Des Moines Police Department. You're listening to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarah strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsarah.org, join S-E-R-R-A.org. Thank you, Sarah, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. At Intervisions Healthcare, we see patients with unplanned pregnancies from ages 12 to 43. An unplanned pregnancy is traumatic at any age. For that reason, we specialize in educating, encouraging, and empowering vulnerable and at-risk mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy with the medical information and services necessary for them to make an informed decision. For more information on the free medical services at Intervisions Healthcare or to support our mission or become a volunteer, visit IVHcare.org. Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. We are back with Craig Vasquez, a member of the Police Department of Des Moines. Officer Vasquez, thank you again for remaining with us. Um, you're, you're not out there proselytizing, you know, trying to win converts in the course of your daily work and, and the, the beat that you keep. But, uh, you know, you're, you're also obviously trained to be very observant. And then your spiritual intuition as you go into situations and how, you know, your own personal spirituality as that continues to evolve, but also trying to meet people and possibly something of that connection that can, you know, as part of your engagement and trying to lift them up to a better place might have some in, ingredients of faith in, in part of that. That's right, Bishop. Um, you know, we go into people's houses and, and we see things, we make observations, we're police officers, we have to be tactically sound, aware of our environment. Um, I used to instruct defensive tactics, so I know a little bit about these things, but it's very important for us as police officers to be aware of our surroundings. Now, sometimes in my observations, I notice a cross or maybe a crucifix on the wall or maybe a statue, you know, a depiction of Our Lady or maybe a saint. And, and sometimes that comes into conversation. Absolutely. Not with every family, not with every one. Um, some people might not be comfortable with that. But, um, yeah, that absolutely is a, a little indicator for me as a police officer to possibly bring Christ into the conversation. It does happen, yes, mm-hmm, Bishop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we would think, oh, you know, someone who's a Muslim bringing, you know, passages of the Quran. Well, if one senses that there's a receptivity or connection and this kind of holistic engagement that uh, humanizes the the members of the, the, the department as well. So, yeah, but uh, yes, Bishop. kind of anointing them. Uh, your own spirituality, you and your wife uh, together with your family, that, that continues to take on new texture as well. It really has in recent months, Bishop, yes. And uh, I just want to give you thanks uh, 
for the Latin Mass here in Des Moines and, and Father Pichute and the folks at St. Augustine. I've met some incredible people there um, within the last couple of years. Um, met some good friends at Adoration. It's always a great place to meet a friend. And um, You were the Eucharistic Revival before it was cool. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting thought, Bishop. <laughs> um but yeah, it's it's kind of been something that's been building for the last, oh, I would say a couple of years, um, listening to prayers in Latin and Gregorian chant, which is just beautiful, beautiful. And uh, it's a beautiful form of prayer. And so recently, um, we kind of dipped our toes into St. Augustine for the Latin Mass, and it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful um, Mass. Uh, it feels like you're participating in something ancient, and it was just a wonderful experience um, to go. I, I grew up, um, I was born in 1983, so, um, and I have loved, loved the parishes that we've belonged to, both in Newton and here in Des Moines, mm-hmm. uh, Holy Trinity. Um, it's just a wonderful parish. So what I'm hearing is it's not just a matter of novelty, but there's a, a dimension of the transcendent here that's opened up something for you, and that the, the Latin, it's not just, oh, it's a mystical, special knowledge that you have but that it lends itself to the mystery. And obviously I've appreciated that the folks uh, celebrating, uh, participating in the traditional Latin Mass, see themselves very much as part of the parish of St. Augustine Parish, see themselves as part of the diocese. You know, our Holy Father concerned that groups are kind of splintering off and that this becomes a, a new kind of protest, if you will. And that, that itself is not the, the mark of the Holy Spirit. So what I'm hearing for you. And so even your, your prayer, you've built, plugged yourself, you and your wife, in, in terms of the prayer of the church, the liturgy of the hours, I understand. Yes, that's right, Bishop. Um, and, and, you know, just to go back to the Mass itself, it's just a, it's an experience um, and I just I, I'd recommend it to anybody that wants to just try something a little different, and perhaps it would uh, impact them differently with their faith. Um, almost like a spiritually intoxicating experience, <laughs> and I mean that in the best of ways. Um, we really enjoyed it, and and yes, I, I. Shia LaBeouf said the same thing in his interview. Pretty similar. Did he? Did he? Okay. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard about that interview. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, yes, I just want to give yeah. you thanks. Well, you know. Time always goes so quickly. Would that there be more topics, but uh, may uh, protection and peace prevail for yes. you and your, your colleagues but in your home. Thanks to your wife, Katie, for sharing you on your day <laughs> off and your generosity in that respect. So we'll look to connect again in the future. Thank you, Bishop. This has been another edition of Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. Thank you to our guests and all of our listeners in Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, or wherever you may be listening to Iowa Catholic Radio on the Spirit Catholic Radio Network. You can hear Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson every week on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Making It Personal is provided by Sarah Vocations Ministry. Learn more at joinserra.org.